r slash rules horror posted by you slash inevitable underscore cookie underscore 74 the game beyond the fourth wall did you know that there is such a thing as the fourth wall within a cartoon it's what we would call the safe zone a barrier of sorts when cartoon characters break the fourth wall they are inches close to going outside the safe zone which is what i call the fifth wall and beyond the fifth wall isn't just bound to cartoon characters humans can pass through this wall as well however some if not most people would consider this to be a horrible idea due to how dangerous playing the game, or ritual, can be. The fifth wall is not a safe place for anyone, not a real person nor a cartoon character. This game is quite short but very risky and if you can't handle the rules nor can you handle the possible trauma that may come with playing this game, do not play. 1. To start the game, you need to be asleep. But turn on your TV beforehand. That TV is the bridge between your reality and the fifth wall. 2. Be sure to fall asleep with a marker in hand. That's so you don't get lost. You will see random objects in this dimension, objects such as, poles, toys, and even buildings. 3. Once you fall asleep, you will wake up in a pitch black world, seeing nothing more than a stop sign. The sign will read, the fifth wall. This sign is your entryway and your exit so do not lose this sign. If the sign says anything else, knock yourself out so you can awaken in the real world before the abandoned ones get to you. 4. Once you're in the fifth wall, you will meet what appears to be distorted cartoon characters, those are the abandoned ones I mentioned earlier, steer clear of them. Please. 5. The fifth wall has the least amount of threats you will find whilst in this world, if you find a sign that reads, beyond, you have now crossed into dangerous territory, and you will see enemies more often. 6. These rules sound scary so far, but this fear only gets worse once you realize you've gotten lost and can't find your way back to the sign. I would say off yourself but you wouldn't be able to, you'd just be stuck there until you turn into one of the many entities within this fractured dimension. 7. Once you reach the fifth wall sign again, try to fall asleep next to it, if you can't, simply knock yourself out. You'll wake up back in your house. 8. Once you return home, turn your TV off, this is to make sure you don't accidentally return to that dimension. This game may sound easy, but almost everyone who has tried it hasn't made it back, so I wouldn't be too cocky if I were you. Nonetheless. Have fun I guess and, just don't die please? Posted by you slash inevitable underscore cookie underscore 74. If you see a soundtrack titled submission on your playlist, follow these rules immediately. It's been a great day for you. You're finally off from work, and you can now drive home and snuggle in your comfy bed. Before you even start your car, you plug in your aux cord and decide to play some music. You see a new soundtrack on your playlist titled submission by your favorite band, BTS. You decide to play it, being excited about finding a brand new soundtrack. You don't hear any music, just unintelligible babbles, you turn off the music and try to comprehend what you just heard. Little do you know, you have just thrown yourself into a night of terror and now have to survive until dawn. You're now panicking, understandable, but fear not. For I have a list of rules to help you survive and make it through the night in one piece, yes, you read that right, it's that serious. 1. Turn off the soundtrack, you'll be put under their influence quicker that way. Thus you'll be unable to save yourself when they do decide to approach you. 2. Do not move your car anywhere, you'll only make the night harder for yourself, as they will follow you wherever you go until they are able to lure you into their realm. Only do this at the final hour of the night. 3. Don't let your car get damaged by these creatures, after all it's your only ticket out of here, you're not walking anywhere with those things out. 4. Do not exit your car. Just don't. These creatures will attack whatever they view as easy prey. Your car is your shield, your best friend until dawn, so it's smart to stay within your car. 5. There are 7 creatures, all imitating the BTS band members. You'll recognize them once you see them, they'll look somewhat like the BTS members, just a little off. 6. They're going to interfere with this message and send you false rules, you'll know if it's a false rule. Trust me. 7. Rules 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are lies we just want to meet our biggest fan. 8. If you see any one of the Mimic members in your backseat, you've let your guard down. Don't worry though. Act accordingly for each member of the band. If it's Young Kook, Jimin, or V, let US stay. If it's Young Kook, Jimin or V, close your eyes for 30 seconds, then open your eyes, they should be. Gone now. If it's Suga, open the car door slightly but do not stick any limb outside your car. He will leave. Your car shortly, why? I don't know. If it's Jin, 
He'll ask you a question, answer honestly. Then he'll give you a nod of approval and leave your car. If it's Rap Monster or J-Hope, grab whatever light source you can find, a phone, a flashlight, it just needs to be a light source, shine it in the back seat, you'll hear inhuman howls of pain and the mimic should be gone. 8. If at any moment, all seven mimics surround your car and start banging on the glass, start your car. The car lights will turn on and scare them away, then turn your car off once again. Be quick about it though, as you only have a small window of time to do so. This also applies if when they start shaking your car. 9. Stop resisting. 10. You see any hands appear from the floor of your car, put your legs in your seat until they disappear. 11. During the final hour of the night, all the mimics will come at you and attack your car. At this moment, start your car and stomp on the gas. You'll be able to escape to your home. 12. Once you reach your house, you're not just yet. Run inside and lock all the doors and windows, then bunker down in any room without a window. If even one of the mimics gets inside your home, it's game over. 13. If you somehow break any of the rules listed here is what you should do, just sit and accept your fate. You're going to be attacked. It'll happen real fast, so you won't have any time to end yourself. Don't try it, it'll only make your circumstances worse. Worst case scenario, you die, obviously, best case scenario, they turn you into one of them and attack another innocent soul. I hope this message helps, good luck. Posted by you slash inevitable underscore cookie underscore 74. Camilo in the back rooms. These characters can range from movies, TV shows, and books. I don't care as long as they're a character. I want everyone to join in. One rule for this series, no character can have an easy escape. This is the back room so op characters are going to have to be restrained. Make them experience true suffering. Now enough with that and on to the story. For my back room story, I will be using Camilo from Encanto. Camilo in the back rooms. The young boy known as Camilo woke up on a damp carpeted floor. The buzzing of fluorescent lights already piercing his ears. He stands up with no idea where he is or how he ended up there. The last thing he remembers is falling onto the floor in his room. He walks around to explore the environment, he finds nothing more than mono yellow walls everywhere. No people, no animals, no nature, just walls and dull lighting. Camilo calls out to the area around him, no response. Confused, Camilo walks around some more. Some rooms looked identical to others, some walls looked as if they were on the brink of collapse. Whilst the buzzing was irritating, the smell made it unbearable, it smelled of must, and decay. Camilo continues walking, unsure of how long he's been walking. He spots something moving in the distance and decides to call out to whatever it was. Camilo saw the thing turn and stared at him causing him to breathe a sigh of relief thinking he found another person. The person was on all fours, like a dog, as if they were possibly looking for something. The creature stared for a long while before walking towards Camilo. The boy couldn't help but feel that something was off, as if something was wrong with the person approaching him. If he was walking towards Camilo, why was he still on all fours? Camilo grew even more concerned when he got a closer look at the person. It had beady eyes, its legs were bent in ways that weren't even possible. Camilo realized that he had better chances in isolation than whatever that thing was. Camilo turned to walk away when the creature, that triggered a response from the creature and the creature started to run, and it started to run fast. Camilo didn't even pause to think, he just ran, he ran as far as he could. Due to his panic, he tripped and fell, his shoulder getting cut on the wall plaster. He gripped his shoulder tightly as he ducked behind a wall whilst holding his breath. The creature just missed him. He heard the thing's unearthly howls and its heavy breathing. Camilo was thankful the creature didn't catch him, Lord knows what would happen if that thing got a hold of him. After the creature passed, Camilo released his breath and sat in a cold sweat. He started to weep, not knowing how he got himself in the situation he was currently in. He imagined playing with his little brother Antonio, chatting with his older sister Dolores, and embracing his mother. A loud bang broke him from his trance. Not knowing what was out there, Camilo knew he had to arm himself. He broke a piece of the wall and grasped it tightly as he continued onward into the labyrinth of mono-yellow walls. This is what I'm planning for my story of character in the back rooms. Tell me what you think. D.